Now, if you've been watching this channel, you might have seen videos on UV, which is a package and project manager, and also Rough, which is an extremely fast Python linter and code formatter. These are both developed by Astral, who are releasing these high performance developer tools for the Python ecosystem. And there's another one that's recently been announced, and that's this one here called TY. So let's click through to this repository, and we're going to look at TY in this video. And TY is an extremely fast Python type checker and also a language server as well. And it's written like the other tools in Rust, which makes it extremely fast. Now this tool could potentially replace type checking tools in Python such as MyPy and PyWrite. And it has the potential to be much faster than both of those tools as well. So let's scroll down to the readme at the moment. And before we dive in, note the warning here. TY is in preview and it's not ready for production use at the moment. So the Astro team are working to make it stable and feature complete but there's going to be a lot of bugs and missing features and so on until then. We're going to have a look at it as it is at the moment in this video with the potential to replace those tools I previously mentioned. And this continues that trend of new tools being written in Rust in the Python ecosystem for performance reasons. So let's get started and explore TY in this video. Before we do so, if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. We have opened the memberships recently for those that want to support the channel. And if you want to make a one-off contribution, check out our coffee page. So let's get started and we're going to look at this section here. We can run ty using the uvx command which is short for uv tool run. So let's copy this to the terminal and let's go back to vs code here. Now I have a function that we're going to write here called discounted price. It's going to accept a price and a discount percentage and it's going to return a discounted price. We're going to perform some of the type checking on this code here so we'll write that in a second but let's go to the terminal. Now what we're going to do is actually initialize a project here and let's give it a name of ty demo. So ty underscore demo, that's going to create the files in this directory. And we now can run the command that we copied from the documentation, that's the uvx ty command and that's going to install ty locally. And we get this usage page for the ty executable. So the commands we can use at the moment are the check command, that's going to check a project for type errors. And we also have the server command, which will start a language server. And we also have a version and a help command as well. Now we ran that command with uvx. So uv includes a dedicated interface for interacting with tools. And you can invoke these tools without installation using this command. And what this means, if you're not aware, is that the dependencies, in this case it's ty, are going to be installed in a temporary virtual environment that's isolated from this project. Now what I want to do is run the check command here and let's see what happens when we run that command. Notice that we are getting an error here. So let me just minimize the sidebar. So when we run the check command, what happens is that it checks the code in our project and ty will actually run on all files in the current directory and also subdirectories as well. At the moment we have this error here, invalid return type. So the function that we have here called discounted price can implicitly return none and that's not assignable to the type int or float and that makes sense at the moment because we don't have a body for this function. So if we were to call this function at the moment it's going to return none. So I'm going to print out that function here, let's call it discounted price and we can pass in a random price and a random percentage of 15% and save that. And if we now run python main.py this is going to return none as you can see here. But in the type hinting, this should return a float. So when we run uvx ty check, it's going to detect that this could return none. And it highlights that to us. And notice this here, we have a rule of invalid return type. And that rule is enabled by default. Now if you're familiar with rough, rough comes with a variety of different rules. And you can add rules to your project or you can leave some off if you don't want to use them. It's a similar concept with ty at the moment. So in this case, we have a rule called invalid return type. And that is what is being highlighted here. Now let's fill out the body of the discounted price function. So I'm going to remove the pass statement and I'm going to paste in some code. Now the discount percentage should be a float and it should be between the number 0 and 100. This is a percentage so it should be constrained between those two numbers. And if it falls outside of that range it's going to raise a value error here. Otherwise we take the original price and we multiply it by this number to get a discounted price. Now let's test this out with the function that we have here. So we have the original price of 5 and we're applying a 15% discount. To make this a little bit easier for me to do in my head, I'm going to apply a 20% discount. So 20% of 5 is equal to 1. And this calculation here should therefore return 4. So let's try this out. We're going to run python main.py and indeed we get 4.0 returned. And that is the return type specified in the function declaration. So again we can use the type checking command uvx ty check. And this time all checks have passed because the body of the function should now always return a floating point number. Now let's clear the terminal and we're going to change the return type here to an integer. 
And if we run UVXTY check, let's see what happens. This time, again, we get that invalid return type. So TY is able to detect that. And again, it's using that same rule that we saw before. Now let's move on and I want to define a second function here. It's going to be a simple multiply function that takes two integers as arguments and returns another integer. And in the main block, what we're going to do is we're going to call multiply and we're going to pass five to that as X and as Y. And we're going to print the result to the terminal. So let's clear the terminal at the bottom and we can run main.py with UV run main.py. And when we run that for the first time, as an aside, that is going to create the virtual environment. But notice the number 25 is printed. Let's clear the terminal and let's try UVXTY check again. And all checks are going to pass, as you can see. If you take two integers and multiply them, you will always get back another integer. Now, the reason that TY is beneficial here is that it can detect in development errors such as this. So, for example, if we pass the wrong type, in this case, a string is passed to multiply. If we run this with the UV run main.py command, Notice that because of Python's highly dynamic nature, it takes that string hello, and what's happening in the function is it takes that string and multiplies it by five, which means it repeats the string five times. But that is probably not what you want from a multiply function, albeit this is a very simple example. So when we run uvxty check, it's gonna detect that, and this time we have a different rule being flagged, the invalid argument type. And as well as invalid types, TY can also detect missing arguments as well. So let's clear the terminal and let's rerun UVXTY check. And actually we get the same rule here, but let's change it to a number and we're going to rerun that command. And when we run it this time, we get another rule, the missing argument rule. So TY or other type checkers can catch these issues before they end up in production code. And what we've seen here, these rules are all error rules in TY. Now I'm gonna to go to the GitHub page for TY. And let's scroll down and we're going to go to the documentation for this project. And I want to look for these rules that have been mentioned. So we have this section on rules. And what rules are, are individual checks that TY performs to detect common issues in your code, such as incompatible assignments, missing imports, or invalid type annotations. And each rule has a configurable level. For example, we've seen a bunch of error rules here. These are violations that are reported as errors. And TY is going to exit with the exit code of 1 if these exist. We also have a warn rule as well. These are reported as warnings and an ignore rule. And that means that the rule is actually turned off and it's not gonna flag up if it's detected. Now, when we run TY check, we can specify the level for these rules on the command line. So for example, unused ignore comment, we specify with the level of warn. Redundant cast, we ignore in this case and so on. So if we go back to VS Code, what we ran before was the UVX TY check and it detected the missing argument in this multiply function. But we can go back here and run UVX TY check again. But this time we're gonna pass a flag in here. So we're going to ignore that rule. And the name of the rule was missing argument. So let's run that. And this time all checks have passed because we're ignoring this particular rule. Now there's another way that you could ignore violations and that's to use the no type check decorator. And that is something that actually exists in the Python standard libraries typing module. So we can import that at the top here and we can add that decorator to the multiply function. So let's decorate this function with no type check and let's fix the arguments here. We're gonna pass five in twice as X and Y, but this time we're gonna say that this should return a string. So when we go back to the terminal here, we can run UVX TY check and all checks have passed as you can see. Now if we remove the decorator and rerun that command UVX TY check, we get the invalid return type rule flagging up here and causing the error. So let's clear the terminal and go back to the documentation. And we're going to look at TY check again. And notice here that we're passing a lot of arguments in, a lot of flags into that command to specify what levels each rule should have and what, what rules we want to ignore in this particular project. Now it's inconvenient to have to specify this every time you want to run the command. So another way to do this is to move this to the pyproject.toml file. So rule levels can be changed in the rules section of a configuration file. In this case, tool.ty.rules. So let's copy this and let's go back to the project. And what we're gonna do is open up the sidebar and open pyproject.toml. And we're gonna have that rule section added here. Now I'm gonna leave this blank for now. We're going to add some code to that in a second, but let's go back to main.py. And I want to show one more example in this file here. And it's a bit of a silly one, but it could happen. So let's see what it is. Now let's say we have y as an integer here and we want to declare a default value, but for some reason we declare that default as a string. And let's fix the return type here, which should be an integer. Now if we go to the terminal here, let's rerun UVX TY check and we're gonna see a new rule here and that's the invalid parameter default rule. 
That's the reason I wanted to show this. It's another rule in TY where your default is an invalid type. Now let's say that this rule here we want to ignore. We've made the great decision that in our project we're going to allow the wrong type to be used as a default parameter. So let's go to pyproject.toml and go to this rules section. So what we need to do here is paste in the name of the rule and then we can set that level to error, warn or ignore. And if we want to ignore it, we're going to set it to that. Now just by doing that, if we go back to the terminal here and we rerun UVX TY check, this time all checks have passed and the configuration is being read in here from this rule section and it's telling TY to ignore this rule, which means that this invalid default parameter is not flagged. Now by default, this particular rule is an error, but we can also change it to a warning. So in this case, if we run UVX TY check, what we get here is a warning. So we have a lot of rules built into TY and you can configure them very easily in your pyproject.toml file. So I think this tool is pretty cool and it could potentially replace MyPy and PyWrite someday. And if you're using type checking and you want to experiment with this, it's ready to test, but it's not production ready. That's just a reminder of that at the moment. But I think given the track record of Astral and the success of UV and Rough, I think this is really something that we want to be keeping an eye on. If you're interested in using type checking in your Python projects, and if you want a complete set of rules, you can check out the documentation as well for all of the rules that are currently part of TY. So I hope this video has been a good introduction to TY. If you've enjoyed it and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked below the video. And if you find Bugbytes content useful, consider joining the channel as well. There should be a link just under the video. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.